Fremantle take on Sydney. Preliminary <laughs> final. It will be a magnificent game. 6.30 p.m. on Saturday night. The Dockers at home to the Swanee. I just want to know if Shorey can do an Irish accent without going, to be sure, to be sure to start. Yeah. <laughs> he threw in a haggis as well. <laughs> a Scottish Sorry, mate. One change. It was at the selection table. It wasn't four, so it is at the selector's behest. Jono, let's have a look at the team. Yeah, Johnson comes back in and Sheridan's the unlucky player mm. there for Fremantle. But Johnson obviously dominated the back line so far this year for the Dockers. He'll come back in and provide the run that is much needed with Spur back into the lineup as well. And look, it's a, it's a great opportunity. They've had the well-deserved break. They've got their home ground advantage. Swans are a little bit sore. So this is the opportunity of a lifetime for the Fremantle Dockers. Sandlands has been excellent in the ruck. His last game against the Cats was enormous. They got plenty of scores from his hit outs. They dominated the clearances. McFarlane's influence last week, so that's mm. worked out perfectly that's as well. Clever. For the Dockers, comes back in, has one game, gets the rest to get the body right to go again in a prelim final. Mentioned least, but Maine's so important. Ryan Crowley is the interesting one for me, though, because look, you look at what he did after the game versus the Cats, and sometimes you sit back and think, why even worry about that, mm. Ryan Crowley? Why worry about that side of things? Shake the hand and just go, because you've done a good job. You've done exactly what the coaches asked and your teammates and leaders have asked you. Yes. Shake the hands, say, well done, and see you later. He, see you next time. He might be leaving something in the barrel for next time. Well, he could be, <laughs> but I, I think he's opening up the barrel for himself at times too for, for next time. Hey, tell you what, how good are they down back? In terms of a balanced back line, you have Dawson is a 6'5", mm -hmm. McFarlane is a 6'3 and, and your key position player seriously quick. Johnson 6'4 and a half. Can play on a five foot ten or a six foot six, so they get the scope that way. And the other three blokes they've named in the back line, Duffield, Spur and Pierce, all good runners, mm. all can kick. Probably Mazungu's the other one who'll replace he'll Pierce. He'll, yeah. yeah, he'll roll back, yeah, yeah of course. They're just as they've named yeah. them though. I mean they can all kick yeah. the footy mm -hmm. and they've got the, the the balance of Johnson who can roll off the tall to the short and back vice versa. It's just a seriously who, balanced team. Who is the story of that team for you? The story of the team could be Zach Dawson in, well, in, in some ways, yeah, to be, but he's, to, he, to know be honest. That, you know that Ross Zach Clark's the one for me. Well, I'm, I'm Pierce. Daniel okay, Pierce. Yeah. He was gone, done and right. dusted, non-competitive at Port. Yep. He played and on the outside, and now he conforms, and this is why Ross Lyon's so good, he conforms to what the team mm. wants, and you haven't seen him shirk an issue, which I don't think he did at Port, but he was, he's playing still on the outside, but also winning the ball himself at times when he has to. And, and no doubt about that. The one, I reckon, as we go into grand final week, and giving away my tip here, who will be saying who will play on him, who will cut loose this weekend, I think, Michael Walters. Mm. Uh, he was set for a three or mm. four mm. or even maybe one more than that goal tally. Uh, for the Dockers, he's a seriously good well, player. Well, he'll have a solid opponent. Maybe Nick Smith is the, his likely mm. opponent this week, and he just locks you away. Don't worry about yeah. that. So it's going to be a big challenge for him. If he doesn't go to Ballantyne, that is Smith. Yep. Exactly. Mm. All right. Okay, Doug, let's have a look at the Vero uh, performance indicator here, and it is opposition scores per inside 50. So, so to explain this and get it down pat a bit more, when teams go into your forward 50, sorry, into their uh, forward 50, how many times have they score? And look at that, one and two in, uh, in, yeah, in the, the competition. competition. And Sydney yeah. are ranked one, and uh, they play Patterson Stadium so well. They're probably there. I've seen them both sides a fair bit throughout the season, but seen Sydney the last couple of years at Patterson's, and they dominate that ground. They play it so well. Two most miserly defences, and if you were to take Sydney's favourite ground to defend... Docker's favourite ground to defend, I reckon you'd flip one and two. Mm. I mean, yeah, that's over the season, mm. the away game's taken into it. Sydney defend uh, SCG so well, well. Docker's well. defend this game where they're playing on Saturday night, Patterson's so well. Well, they do. One man who will look to light up Patterson's as well this week is Matty Pavlich, and he's our money man for the Fremantle <laughs> Tockers. <laughs> and here we go, cha-ching for Matthew Pavlich, because he has just grown over the last month of footy in the home and away season. The last couple of weeks of that, then played in an important final. Played quite well uh, as well, and kicked a couple of goals, and, and did what he had to do, and actually got back. And that defence going, the, the spall going back into defence late in that game was, was so important for Fremantle to get across the line. So he's their inspirational leader and look, he, uh, he loves the big occasion as well and he's proved that he can play well in finals. So look for him to light it up. He's, f he's fresh, John. That's, That's the it. one that, and yep. his body looks like it's in good shape. Yeah, you know? nice. yeah. No, well, they've got a number of players like that at the mm. moment. That's the thing. A number of players that have battled injury throughout the year have now got themselves yep. in, got a couple of games under their belt 
and now I've had that week off to really just become cherry ripe. Okay, so we see there 26 goals in nine finals. He oh, keeps yeah. to that average. He mm. gets three. They're going to be Can tough to beat. Yep. Mm. It's not they, bad either. Six-time All-Australian. Well, six if he gets best. three, gee, all they have to do is get another ten mm. from any one of ten other blokes who are going to float through that forward half yep. of the ground. And they've got 13. You've got to kick 14. Yeah. You've got to kick 100-plus to beat them. No one kicks 100-plus no. against no. them over there. Well, they haven't scored 100 plus too often either. They just no, forget true. that. So that's true. true. But Pavlich is the key there. If he gets yes. three or four, they'll tip the 100 and win. Let's take a look at the Swannies now. Uh, Parco, at the selection table, they have two yeah. forced changes, both with injuries. That's true, and they'll, they'll be disappointed. T Tippett's never got up to the point where he could show what he could do. And Mitchell's been an absolute gun. I think the real disappointment here is that they're being replaced by two players. McGlynn's been up and down, and Rowan's yet to show, I think, anywhere near the form that we know that he can produce. So they're going in as selected, not as, what's the word, good or as talented as they were in the previous week. I, I just love Sydney because they, they certainly are the most admired team in the competition from my point of view. They perform probably as close to their potential or talent mm. every week Better than maybe any other side in the competition do. They're the most honest team I reckon uh, I've seen in two decades. I, I agree, oh, I agree no. with exactly no, that. When we say best, you know, Geelong, you'd have to say best better, better, probably. Better, yeah. uh, but this is the most honest team I've seen in 20 years. Yeah, and we saw, I think you, Shorey, talked about McVeigh last week. I've oh. never... Leadership of that kind in a game where it was required is amazing for a bloke who's a veteran now. And young Hanabry has become an absolute gun in terms of doing the right mm. thing at the right time. But he'll become a key. I think both those are key again this week. Uh, they, as you said, they remain the number one team defensively in the competition, not that uh, Frio are that far <laughs> behind no them. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's going to be a fascinating game. She might be a nil or draw. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I, so. I've got the job at some stage of picking, uh, picking who's going to kick the first goal. I reckon it happened about halfway through the third quarter. Have a look at those stats, Marco. Like, like, stats, stats, Marco. It's unbelievable. Un unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, they, they are just superb in terms of their consistency. 27.4 disposed, uncontested possession of 16.8, inside 50s 3.5, rebound 50s 3.6 and tackles at 3.4. I mean, that is an unbelievable from a player who's now, what, in his late... 20s, maybe his early 30s. That is a superb oh. average. And I think it'll be a part two, Derm, of slingshot footy, the return of it for the Sydney Swans this week. When you look at Rowan, McGlynn, Jetta, yeah. O'Keefe, Bolton, Jack, Hanabry, get okay. back and watch them cut from one half-back flank to the other half-forward flank and watch them link up. That's the way they play Patterson so well, with that speed in their side. And Richards and uh, Grundy had uh, 15 intercept marks in the third quarter mm, last week, and they were allowed to do it again by Carlton. So I, I don't know where we might see it, nearly from forward 50 to forward 50, because these sides are so good defensively, especially on ball, both yeah. of them. If Mundy's got the ball, they won't be getting too many intercept marks. No, no he no. kicks it beautifully, doesn't he? He does kick it beautifully. The one thing I'll say now, this has been devil's advocate analytically, Gary Rowan's off the pace, and we understand why. He had the horrible uh, injury, yep. has come back, has struggled to get up to speed. Wonderful talent. We hope he returns to what he's capable of showing us. Jesse White, wonderful talent, but has never had consistency. He was OK last week. He was, yeah. on occasions. Yeah, Terrible the week before against yeah. Hawthorne, real opposition. Biggs, second game. Yeah, all right, all right. Kid, no, no, yeah. all right. Everett. Yeah, has been inconsistent. Yeah. Cunningham, just Young don't kid, know. And as I mentioned, Gary Rowan. Now, there's five players. There's five players. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Five mm. players who we have, for this game, a question mark mm. against. Yeah. They right. went into the final series last week, last year. No question marks on any player. Mm. I'd play. I would seriously play. You've got the centre circle, just forward of that last line. So everyone else is pushing up defending. Yep. And I'd play Rowan there and Jetta there. So when that okay. ball's coming out, you've got speed. So all of a sudden they've got speed against Dawson. McFarlane's reasonably quick. And Duffield, possibly, yep. in that. I'd, I'd position those two there and just let them go. Mm. We'll get somebody up there and just bump a bar. Well, yeah. they get around that. That's, <laughs> that's, not, that's not going to worry them. Their, their speed gets around that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Paco. <laughs> right. I was yeah, going to be a bit <laughs> naughty then and say this is a final. You do things which aren't exactly acceptable <laughs> by standards. Don't miss the GFI. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about that five in relation to Sydney. Can't find one, let alone five, in relation to Fremantle. No. Mm. They've got the team right, they, they want. Absolutely. Yeah. Out where they want. All right, guys. Uh,
Who's our money man for the Swans? Come on. Oh. Well, here we go. Luke and, Hannibal, oh, Daniel, Daniel Hannabury. Luke Hannabury, his Luke uncle. Hannibal. Daniel <laughs> Hannabury. <laughs> this kid, I've been saying it all year, is a out and out star. He's tough, he's hard, he wins the footy and he can use it beautifully. 25.8 disposals per game, contested possessions, a bit over 10 a game, 15 on the outside, inside 50s, 3 to 4 a game, clearances, same, 3 to 4 a game. He goes inside 50 once a quarter and he uh, gets a clearance once a quarter for each game he plays. He's a star, this he kid. He is, isn't he? And, and Shory, I know you heard the interview with Ryan Crowley yep. yesterday and he wants another crack at <laughs> Dan Hannafree because he's the only player that's been able to get loose of Crowley throughout the home and away season as well. You know, on why? you know why? Because he does the three things. He gets out the back, he links up out the side, and he goes and gets his own ball. Yeah. So he, that that's so hard to tag mm. because you, you go to one contest, you think, will he go backwards? Yeah, will yeah, he we'll go, come. you know, it, yeah. and you have to do it. He's, if he goes into his shell, Crowley will get him. We'll start at that end. Give us yep. that sort of scope, the margin scope. By what? Who are you I'm, going for? I'm going Jake? for a Fremantle by two goals. I think they'll uh, be a tight game all the way through, and then That's they'll right. kick a couple right towards the death. We've got that guaranteed, haven't we? It's going to be a tight <laughs> game, whatever <laughs> happens. Um, and, that, and because it will, I reckon one and a half or two goals will be the difference, and I certainly think it'll be Fremantle. Uh, I'm going six goals for you. I think, they'll, I think they'll belt them here. For the reasons the five blokes you said, I think no, uh, Swans are really sore. Coming off that game, it wasn't just those two who missed out, but a couple of others were sore too. True. I think they'll get them. I'm going for Freo, and I think it'll be 15 to 30 points, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be tight until the last 15 minutes or so, and, and it just bingo. depends how much Fremantle put the foot down mm -hmm. as to how far they will win. Have, have well, you ever felt uncomfortable about two games, I'll get to this quickly, the Swans and Geelong tipping against them? No, I, I, no. I, I, I hate it. You just don't do it. You don't do it. Do you know? Oh, there, there might be one, one, one well, turn up for the weekend. Well, I hope oh. not. <laughs> Get into that. And this, stuff. this week I've oh. gone with the following, and I am more confident than anybody's been here so far in the last Ooh. month. Uh, pretty confident of a clean sweep tip. We've suggested is Fremantle. Mm -hmm. The first goal, as I said, will be scored about the 10 minute mark of the second quarter. That's Ballantyne. <laughs> and the ball magnet, who's been just superb, uh, young Barlow, he just keeps getting it. And the tough nut we've talked about all night, McVeigh will win more yeah, contested get, ball than get. anybody else. Mm. Absolutely. So, yeah, Jared McVeigh to win most of the footy. And so we, we're all fairly comfortable on Fremantle in the margin by the end of the game. Yep, yep. All right. Mm -hmm.